This week on Sportsman TV, yakking for redfish. Stay with us. Go spoon, second cast, right against the bank. Actually, you know, I got into it again after Katrina when uh, lost my boat and lost a lot of fishing friends and you know was dying to get on the water and saw kayak fishing as an easy way to get back out and start fishing. And you know, I can tell you in the last, just in the last few years, it's just simply exploded. I knew this had become a popular way to fish, but I've never really been in a, you know, I paddled one around a little bit. Never really realized, you know, what you could do in a kayak. And all day long while you're sitting there catching fish, one boat after another is going, wow, wow, wow. And usually when they're getting back to the dock and you're getting back to the dock, you just as many fish as they do. That's a one spot. The roof. It's hard to catch that one with one spot. Oh. I mean, I'm going through water this deep, slipping right up. You know, I had one miss me bit at the bait at the end of the pole, you know, because you're so silent. And uh, the other thing with these pedals and the way you steer it, I mean, you just creep along and cast, you know. I've been in it a couple hours and I'm already, uh, you know, ready to, to camo it up, and put some shotguns in it. <laughs> I see there's a lot of use for it, a lot of things you could, you know, a lot of things you could do with it. Why Bowie Outfitters? Our customers know why. Bowie Outfitters is a, a friendly place. Uh, Bowie Outfitters is a very personable place. Uh, when you walk in the front doors, everybody's telling you hello, and it makes it very easy to come in here and, and shop and on, be a customer and go to the archery range and go to the gun counter just because you're gonna get personalized service. That's Bowie Outfitters. Perkins Road between Essen Lane and Blue Bonnet. Bowie Outfitters, for everything outdoors. It's time to register for the 2013 CCA Louisiana Star Fishing Tournament. 101 days of fishing and over a half million dollars in prizes are up for grabs in over 25 divisions. The Star has something for everyone with offshore, inshore, kayak, fly fishing, ladies only, and youth divisions. And kids fish for free, courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. And those 50 tag redfish are waiting to be caught. 35 weigh stations, 101 days to fish, all for $25 with a CCA membership. For more information, visit ccastar.com. You want to see the bullet for a half a million dollar gun? Chartreuse Blackback KVD 1.5. The bait that Kevin Van Dam used to win his fourth Bassmaster Classic. Load it. Shoot it. Set the hook. Money in the bank, baby.
Rouge Parish, Louisiana. Dig in. LouisianaSportsman.com is the South's premier hunting and fishing website. Planning a hunting or fishing trip? Visit LouisianaSportsman.com and get up-to-the-date information on weather, tides, or solar data. Our breaking news and continually updating form will keep you up to date. Or visit our report section and ask the locals what's been biting and where. Need to sell or buy an outdoor item? LouisianaSportsman.com's free classifieds are the quickest way for you to reach the outdoor market. LouisianaSportsman.com, the quick way to get the most of the outdoors. Well, you know, we, we, uh, we were fishing today in the marsh around Grand Isle. I fished all around the coast of Louisiana, the east coast and the western part of the state but I had never been here before. Never been technically, you know, right here at Grand Island. It, it actually looks like there's mangroves growing around. It's totally different from any part of the coast I've ever been on. It's kind of a wild place, you know, it's different. Realistically, probably it reminds me of Florida more so than other places in Louisiana. Man, Grand Isle is like Mecca for kayak fishing. You know, Grand Isle is awesome. I mean, you have miles of road that you can pull off on a side and, uh, and just throw your kayak in and go, you know. And beyond that, I mean, you have Fushan, Leeville, you know, even further north, even in the Golden Meadow. All along Highway 1, you're gonna find redfish, trout, flounder, black drum, sheep's head, you know, all good eating fish. You know, uh, the thought of me going kayak fishing, I really didn't have a clue. In recent times, it's become real popular. Uh, you know, you meet cars on the highway and you see kayak strapped on top and I, they started to have kayak tournaments and uh, you know, just a lot of people doing that now. I didn't honestly did not have a clue how it would be. No idea. Uh, probably I had a lot of negative with it. Wouldn't like some, I didn't feel like it would be something that I really liked. You know how you, uh, well, you know how you'll make a, an opinion of something before you know anything about it? It's totally wrong. Cause I really thought I was like, you know, that's kayak and it's kind of for them, you know, you might want to go hug a tree or something, you know, and go kayaking, but I really like it. You know, the biggest thing I saw in the other guys were how they had everything perfect. From the way they put their ice chest in the boat, their dip net, the way their rods, they had fixed them some little rod holders on their ice chest, so everything was out of the way. Everything was in line, cause you're kind of in a confined area. Everything was, could be reached from right there in the seat, you know, from where you're sitting at in the kayak. I'm, I'm a, a simple person. I keep it, keep it pretty simple. Just a milk crate. I installed rod holders around two sides to hold multiple rods. As you can see, I'm carrying probably more than I need. Uh, one, one thing I do like is it, it uh, I like to video, I like to film a lot of my trips. And uh, a rod holder is perfect for a painter's pole, you can put that GoPro on and uh, get a good shot. Well, you know, a lot of times, you know, on this show, we're in big boats. I mean, you know, we've been as big as 40 foot going offshore. And, you know, a lot of people out there, and I totally understand this, there are a lot of people out there on a the budget, you know, and, you know, honestly, fishing can be expensive. It can be as expensive it's as expensive as you want it to be. And that's the cool thing about the kayak. Most boats that you have, you buy them, they're expensive. Then you have gas, oil, maintenance. The cool thing about the kayak is, you know, you have that initial investment and then you're done. And unless you punch a hole in it or something and just rough on it and tear it up, I mean, it'll last forever. And there's no more expense unless you just want to add extras to it. And I'm sure just like anything else, you can put depth finders and GPSs and all kinds of, you know, trick it out. but you don't have that daily expense of gas and oil like you would with a normal boat and motor. You know, with fishing and hunting on the overall decline most places, uh, kayak fishing is one of the good segments of the sport that's really growing. You know, you would think it's a young man's sport, but uh, I'm kind of proof that it's not. You know, in our local club, we've got complete range, you know, from the young teenagers and even smaller kids that are going out with their parents all the way up to the older guys that have been fishing all their life and just looking for a little different uh, method of fishing, a little more excitement being, you know, kind of closer to the nature. Got to this time, buddy. I pull my boat around. <laughs> uh -huh. 
but that's the cool thing about it. I've never been in one of these in my entire life, and I'm already using it and catching fish out of it, you know, the first day out. You know, it's something that just, you know, easy. I mean, both of my, there's no doubt in my mind, both of my sons could, you know, I could put them right in it, and they'd go right, you know, probably better than I can. Couple things in uh, relation to your rods and making sure they stay on board or if they go off overboard that you'll keep them. Simple rod float, just made out of uh, foam, just like a noodle, it's got some Velcro on it, put it on there, you drop it over. Even the heavier rods may not completely float it, but it'll slow it down. A lot of times it'll make it stand up and you can grab the rod tip, keep you from losing your rod. Another thing that's so important is a leash. Anything you don't want to drop overboard, especially if it's gonna sink, you can buy commercial leashes, you can make leashes. It's just got some little stainless carabiners on there. Clip it to one end of your boat, grab anywhere on your rod, just clip it off. This way, your rod falls over, it's gonna be hooked on and uh, keep you from losing it. Why buoy outfitters? Our customers know why. When you need something, you come in, you ask for it, and you can get it. Great selection of clothes here, guns, shells, calls, whatever you need. I like coming in and doing that. And more importantly for me, I'm a big bow hunter. I think these guys are better than anybody. That's why I come over to Bowie Outfitters. That's Bowie Outfitters. Perkins Road between Essen Lane and Blue Bonnet. Bowie Outfitters for everything outdoors. It's time to register for the 2013 CCA Louisiana Star Fishing Tournament. 101 days of fishing and over a half million dollars in prizes are up for grabs in over 25 divisions. The Star has something for everyone with offshore, inshore, kayak, fly fishing, ladies only, and youth divisions. And kids fish for free, courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. And those 50 tag redfish are waiting to be caught. 35 way stations, 101 days to fish, all for $25 with a CCA membership. For more information, visit CCAStar.com. As fishermen, we're predators. And fish are the prey. In nature, the best fishermen have one thing in common, their eyes. How do you turn your eyes into the eye of a predator? It takes 11 layers of lens technology and a new lens color to make the human eye emulate the eye of a predator. Stop buying glasses for the classes to make yourself an alpha predator. Louisiana Sportsman Magazine. For over 31 years, your source for fishing and hunting information. Each month you will find stories by local experts on everything from bass to redfish to ducks, deer to trout and turkey. We've got incredible local information that you can use immediately to get more success outdoors. You'll also enjoy monthly columns on cooking, the latest lures, GPS locations, shooting, kayaks, and much more. Have Louisiana Sportsman delivered to your house and safe. $24.99 gets you a full year of Louisiana Sportsman. To order today, visit louisianasportsman.com. All right, so when you're first starting out kayak fishing, uh, one of the, the first things you have to consider is where to put your fish. And uh, a lot of people use the tank well and put a hard ice chest in the back. I don't like that because it catches wind. So I just use a little soft ice chest. You know, this will last me probably a year and before I get holes poked in it from, you know, redfish fins. It's really easy to unbuckle lift it up and just slide that red right there or that trout or that flounder you don't have to lean behind you know you don't have to to get your center of gravity outside of the boat you, you keep it all in the boat and that's really important you know you always depend on those first couple bites uh, you know to tell you where the fish are and uh, I started off kind of just staying off maybe a half a cat you know a half a long cast from the bank 45 and but I noticed the first couple bites I got, they came right against the grass line. You know, the cool thing about redfish, I mean, they're, they're, they just, I mean, they're not exactly like largemouth bass. Like, they don't hold as tight to cover, but they really, you know, they know to stay close to that cover because whatever they're eating, that's where it's living at. And I'm sure when that, uh, you know, that water comes up in that grass, like if there's fiddler crabs and blue crabs and mullet gets up there and feeds and just, I've seen a good many shrimp jumping out of the, I mean, this place is loaded with, uh, you know, loaded with bait. And uh, we basically were fishing on the incoming tide. The wind was out of the east, and it never, it got high, and it, it actually never went down. It actually just kept rising the whole time we were there. You know, once I figured out that the fish were, 
you know, right against the grass or they were a foot off the grass. I just put the, and that's the other cool thing about the kayak, because they draft that much water, I was able to put that boat just almost drag in the grass. No, that's the thing, and like I said, you're, you can run your little parallel to the bank instead of, you know, just casting in and reeling back out where maybe the first three yards or so you're in the productive water. Here, the whole time, your lure's coming back, and you gotta work it all the way back to the boat, because there'll be many times you'll be picking it up next to the kayak, and you'll either grab it or try and grab it. Yeah, one of the things with kayaking, you know, unlike a boat, you get in a boat and you got four people in the boat. Well, you're all fishing in the same spot. You might, you know, you fish the front of the boat, the back of the boat, but you're still generally right there, don't know what the patterns are, what they're catching on. We went out today with several boats, kind of split up a little bit, but you're usually within shouting range, or at least certainly telephone range of everybody. Everybody's doing a little different thing, a little different lures, beating the banks here, fishing a pond here, fishing the grass beds there. And what happens by doing that, you kind of figure out what the pattern is for the day, where those fish are hanging, what they're looking for, and then you can communicate and get everybody over there, and then everybody's catching fish again, and you know, not just sitting in one empty spot and maybe not doing anything. At our tournaments, a slam is a, is a flounder, a trout, and a redfish. I ended up getting a slam today, and that's, you know, that's always a good, a good day when you can get all three species. Started off the day throwing top water for trout, and uh, I was I was on a point, and I got my first trout on that top water. It's always good to get a fish on a top water. I mean, that's to me, you know, you can't get any better. So I, I worked that point a little bit, a little bit more, and uh, ended up getting another trout, which was really cool because that trout he hit right next to the boat. You know, he came up. And he, I kind of knew something was going on because you could kind of see the the water, you know, kind of rippling behind that bait. Yeah, I ended up catching a, a, a nice flounder today. Um, it was kind of neat because uh, it was set up perfect. I knew there was going to be something there. I mean, it just looked too good. Too good to be true. Yeah. And sure enough, popped it once and then pop, went to pop it again and you felt the weight. You know, you felt that flounder on there. And any, <laughs> as any kayak fisherman knows, as soon as you hook a flounder, you freak out because <laughs> they're, they're so easy to lose. And you know, honestly, today we have re we had real realistic conditions. We don't always get to wait till the weather and everything lines up just right. And 99% of the population out there can't just wait to go fishing when everything is lined up perfectly. When you get that opportunity, you've worked all week, whatever the deal is that's kept you from being on the water, you, you know, when there's that day to go, you're going regardless. You know, so what the conditions aren't that great. There's normally always a way to catch them. Oh, I'm throwing a Strike King Pure Poison. You know, you see me throw that a lot. I, I catch a lot of bass on it and catch a lot of uh, redfish on it. And again, you know, fish for redfish, I typically don't put a trailer on unless the grass is bad and I have to keep it up above it. Like today, the conditions weren't that good. But by just picking up that Pure Poison, and I call it grinding, it's just keeping it wet. The more times I put it out there, the more times I am apt to get it in front of one. And no, they all won't bite, but some of them will. You know, I know that you know, you can get the, you know, you, they make models without the pedals and models with the pedals, but for me, I like the pedals. I like a foot control trolling motor. You know, that the deal with that for me is it leaves my uh, hands free. Like I can just be moving along and steady fishing and I ain't stop to do anything, you know. It's almost like fishing off the elliptical machine. It's like having a gym membership, but better than spending that money on a gym membership, you buy the kayak, it's paid for, you get an exercise, and you're fishing all at the same time. Go, you go, girl. <laughs> you know, that's the cool thing. I'm getting to work out. I'm getting to fish. I'm looking good, feeling good. I mean, you can't, you can't beat this yakking. Honestly, there's a lot of wives out there that think their husband needs a gym membership. My wife probably thinks I need one. But now that I'm kayaking, I don't need one anymore. I mean, I'm like, I mean, you know what, when I feel like I need to work out a little bit, just go a little harder on those pedals. That's all you gotta do. It has a lot to do just with, with, uh, with how you fish and, and the mentality behind it. You know, it's nice and slow and easy, and there are some fishing that you do in a boat that's like this, but um, I think this is pretty unique and mellow and fun and easy to do. A lot easier by yourself, I think, than in a boat. Um, and you really do catch just as much fish. <laughs> That's the other thing I think that a lot of people don't realize. Is... Yeah. So, got a couple tags left after today. So we'll see if we can't get this guy tagged. It's for the CCA, and um, it's a 
Cooperative Marine Sport Fish Tagging Program. Um, so I'm pretty sure they share the data. Uh, it's a redfish and trout they're after in Louisiana, and it's it's uh, tracking their movements, trying to learn more about them. So this is the tag, and uh, this is the insertion device. I don't know what you'd call it, I guess. But you're gonna slide that tag down the hollow tip with the barb out. We're gonna bring it down to about the fourth spine uh, with the reds. You've got to get under that scale, and then you're just gonna go right on in until that barb is inside of the flesh, and then you're gonna pull it right back out. Make sure it's set, and then we gotta release them. So another thing that is essential, at least for me as a sight fisherman, what I found is uh, I needed a place to stow my paddle when I did see a fish. And what I came up with, which is really simple, is just, uh, I found an old belt at home. It's an old canvas belt and uh, I attached a paddle clip to it. As I'm paddling and I see that fish, I can snap this bad boy right here and I'm hands free. So now I can lean over, grab my rod and make that cast that I need to make to that red fish. This is Ryan Terrio. I'm here at Bowie Outfitters and listen, I'm an avid bow hunter. If you're looking for a place with the best service in the south and wonderful accessories, not to mention a top of the line bow range, Bowie Outfitters is a place for you. A wonderful staff here and great service at Bowie, but an awesome selection of guns. We have pistols, rifles, and shotguns and everything else you could imagine. And for all those hard to find bass fishing and inshore products, Bowie Outfitters is a place for you. That's Bowie Outfitters for everything outdoors in between Essen and Blue Bonnet on Perkins Road. Do you want the better selection and bigger savings? Service Chevrolet Cadillac has the largest inventory of Chevys in Louisiana. You can choose from over 300 Silverados, all in one location. The Chevy Silverado has the best pickup coverage in America and the lowest cost of ownership of any full-size pickup on the road. Shop the better selection and get bigger savings at Service Chevrolet Cadillac, 1212 Ambassador Caffrey, or visit us at servicegm.com. Don't just be a sportsman, look like one too. Men, women, kids, everyone wants to look like a good sport. And now you can find it all in one place without leaving the house. Our popular Sportsman logo clothing and accessories are just a click away at louisianasportsman.com. T-shirts, caps, polarized sunglasses, jewelry, koozies, and more are available in a variety of sizes and colors. It's easy to show the world that you are a sportsman. Visit shop.louisianasportsman.com today and get that perfect sportsman item for yourself or as a gift for that sportsman in your life. Anybody who owns a car, anybody out there who owns a car can afford a kayak. So that pretty much, that's a boat for everybody on the planet to use. You don't have to go to a marina. You don't have to, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you can see water, I mean, cause you can drag if you need it to a couple hundred yards to get it to a place, you know, cause they're light, they're smooth on the bottom. It lends itself to exploring different areas cause you're limited in how far you can go from land. So you tend to vary where you go as far as your geographic area goes, where a lot of times in a boat, um, you know, a lot of guys will get real comfortable launching in a certain spot. You know, when you're driving down the side of the road, you're, <laughs> everything you see is a, is a potential launch point if it's anywhere near the water, uh, which in Louisiana, you can't avoid. Um, just like any, any kind of fishing, there's, there's always something to learn. There's always new places to learn and stuff like that, new places to explore. So that, that seems to change for me on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, Right now, I've been fishing in Plaquemines Parish a lot. Really loving fishing down Highway 23. Yeah, I mean, we did fishing today in Grand Isle for, uh, for Sportsman TV, fishing the marsh. You know, broken marsh for redfish. Again, anywhere, you know, south of I-10, pretty much across the state, you're gonna have broken marsh like that. You know, broken marsh off the side of the road, perfect for the kayaks. You can combat launch, you don't need a launch. You get in, you're out there, you're fishing as soon as you get in the water. Back in April of this year, we did a feature article for Louisiana Sportsman Magazine on kayaks. Uh, we had a 
short introduction on what to look for, you know, buying, not every kayak's the same, not everybody's the same for each kayak. But we went through nine different manufacturers and a total of 20 different models of kayaks. You know, being active in the sport, kind of know what the guys around here are using, what kind of boats they like, and you know, what feet fits our needs the best down here in Louisiana. So we did a really comprehensive article on these boats. Yeah, it's definitely a varied, it's a, a, a varied uh, market within kayaks where you can go anywhere from, from your, um, you know, uh, $400 price point brands. They're still good boats. They don't have as many features. They may not have as much um, into the hull design and things like that to make it faster and more stable, but it, it makes it really accessible for people, especially people that are just starting in the sport. Uh, and then up from there, you've got Hobie, which is what I'm fishing out of today, um, which is a pedal-driven kayak. It's foot pedal, so you don't even have to, to actually paddle. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely the premium kayak on the market, um, really because of, because of this foot pedal system. It's more expensive, so it's such a quick-growing and fast-growing sport that the used market is, is still very strong, too. So that's a good way to get into it, but it's also a good way to, to upgrade when you're ready. Um, you can know that you can sell you know, the kayak that you're in now if you, if you feel like there's another model or a new model or something else. There's, it's really never too tough to go ahead and sell the boat that you're in right now if you feel like you want to upgrade to something else. It's a very peaceful way. You don't disturb anything. You get close to the fish. You can get around so good. You know, you can get right into the cover. You know, today we had high tide and the water stayed up, you know, most of the day and uh, those fish were in the grass and you just, where you couldn't get a big boat. Or you get around in that grass quite, you're not running a trolling motor. We haven't burnt any gas. <laughs> you know, I don't have any batteries to charge. You just drag it up and put it on top of the car and roll out. So far as catching the fish, as long as you can get there, the fish don't know what kind of boat you're in. They don't know what you look like. They don't, they don't care about any of that. They never think about that when they wake up in the morning. Eating and sleeping, that's all they do. So they don't care what kind of boat you're in. That's all up to the individual, what kind of boat they need that, that suits them. Well, as you can tell, no ramp needed to load up this afternoon. We haven't burned any fuel. We caught a bunch of redfish. Join us here next time on Sportsman TV.